One of the main objectives of the slave experience was to prohibit the black woman from experiencing womanhood. It was imperative that our oppressors, white people, blocked women from accessing that power. Because when we have that power as women, we liberate ourselves. And they knew this. So today, when you look at black women, unfortunately, this is a product of a woman who have been blocked from their power, but who have been blocked from being women and who are stuck in a perpetual state of girlhood. In this video, I really want to break down the differences between what girlhood looks like and what womanhood looks like because they're very different. And if we don't have the vocabulary and we don't have these discussions about the difference between the two, what will happen is we will continue to blend girlhood and womanhood together. And that is not conducive to healthy nations, healthy families, and healthy individuals, healthy communities. So I created a list of five ways that you can tell the difference between somebody who is operating in girlhood and someone who's operating in womanhood. Um, there are more, but unfortunately, Instagram has limited <laughs> the ability to delve deep into these type of topics for a reason. So I'm condensing it down so that it's more digestible. So number one is girls are fixated on their looks and women are more concerned about the pre their presence being felt. What does that mean? White people understood that in order to keep us in this state where we are not embodying womanhood, they had to give us things that would hinder our ability to be able to access that power. One of those things is cosmetics. One of those things is constantly fixating on how we look and not embodying who we are. Women don't need to spend hours beating their face, spend hundreds of dollars on weave, spend hundreds of dollars on nails and eyelashes and eyebrows. And all of these cosmetics, those are not needed when you're a woman. Those are aspects of being a girl because girls see value in how they look. When you're a little girl, that's all you really know is how your appearance looks because you haven't gone through that rites of passage to be able to understand the beauty in how you look, yes, but that's not all. You have a presence that's more important. And when you fixate so much on the look, you're basically saying that you don't have that presence. And that's the aspect of being stuck in your girlhood is that you spend time, money, and energy on how you look and you neglect your spirit. You neglect your feminine grace. Feminine grace is not necessarily a look, it's a feeling. It's something that draws people towards you regardless of how you look, regardless of the beauty standards in that society that you're in. Your aura, your presence is what you're concerned about as a woman. And, you're, and when you're a girl and you're stuck in your girlhood, your image is what you're more concerned about. Number two is girls lack the ability to judge and women embrace the power of judgment. So for girls, all they know is their girlhood, right? They haven't experienced womanhood. They haven't experienced any rites of passage for them to be able to say, sister, you shouldn't do this. Sister, let's, let's have this discussion. For judgment for them is not a thing, but for women, that's a power that we possess. We, we are able to say, you know, I've lived this life, I've done this, I've done that, so now I can come and say, sister, you shouldn't wear that. Because, and they also see the duality, the complementarity of what another sister is doing affects me. That's part of being a woman, is you see the, you, you see the connectedness of women as one. So what another woman wears does affect you. What another woman does in her bedroom does affect you, because we're all connected. But when you're a girl, you don't understand that. You're very individualist and you are triggered very easily by discussions somewhat like these because they challenge you. Being able to judge is a power. That's a God-like power. And the God gave us discernment so that we can judge. Discernment without judging is useless. There's no point. We have to be able to discern and judge and do it with respect and kindness, but we, but we can't say the term no judgment. That is a group of women who have 
been um, blocked from their womanhood, who are stuck in a perpetual state of girlhood, and who are physically women on the outside, but are mentally girls. That's not conducive, like I said earlier, to healthy families, healthy societies, healthy children, healthy marriages, healthy relationships, healthy sisterhood. You can't have healthy relationships if you aren't willing to judge. So the girl is hostile to judgment and the woman embraces judgment. Number three is girls lack the ability to curate space and women are master curators. So what is curating space? What does it mean to have the ability to curate space? Curating space is being able to look into empty spaces or empty situations that may seem like there is nothing there, but you're able to look at it and use your clairvoyance as a woman to pour into that space and bring out of that situation or bring out of that space something that necessarily wasn't there in the beginning. That is what curating space is, and that's not something that girls have have mastered yet because they're still in their girlhood. But women, we know how to look into a space and say, oh, I can imagine this here, and I can imagine that there, and oh, wow, this will look beautiful here. And we can do that in our situations as well. We can do that with our men as well. But girls don't see that. Girls want the man already there. They like, he needs to have this, 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 and this. But curating space says he may not have this, this, and this, and this, but I know how to create a situation and I know how to create space to where he has to have this, this, and this, and this as a product of being in this space. That is something that is intrinsic to being a woman. And when you don't possess that, you, you enter situations and you enter spaces where you are relinquishing your power and, and things are happening to you instead of you creating the happening. Does that make sense? So understanding that that's a power that women have is very important. My husband and I are, are planning to create a more in-depth video on what curating space really does look like within the home and even outside of the home. But it's in very important that we are, as women are intentional about the spaces that we're curating because our children are in those spaces, our men are in those spaces, our families come into those spaces, and we truly have the, the authority to be able to dictate how people act and how people feel and the things that they are inspired to do based on the spaces that we create. Women in Africa, from what I've seen, are master curators. They know how to curate when they leave the home and they know how to curate within the home. And being able to curate is intrinsic to being a woman because the girl is still stuck in that adolescent um, pleasure-based space where she doesn't know how to pour into others yet. She doesn't know, she hasn't gone through rites of passage, so she doesn't have the ability to go into a space and, and put things in certain um, spaces or create symbolism within her home or create symbolism within her attire. She doesn't know how to do that yet. But the woman does. And she creates space to where when men and children and other women enter that space, no matter what they are thinking or what they are going through, they have to abide by the space that has been created by that woman. But that's a, that's, a, that's a trait that only women can possess. Girls don't have that. So what I'm seeing, unfortunately, is a, a lot of staged spaces, meaning we know how to put things and make them look nice, make them look dainty, make them look neat and kept. But spiritually, our spaces lack substance. Spiritually, our essence lacks substance. This is why we spend so much time on cosmetics and weave and lashes and nails and all of these things because we have no substance. So I, don't, I can't afford to not have all of these um, cosmetics because there's nothing underneath it. So curating space means I am able to di dictate the atmosphere of people who come into contact with me. Girls do not have that yet. That's something that they have to learn through the rites of passage, through eldership, through watching other women do it. And this is part of the reason why black women today are stuck in this cycle is because our mothers didn't know how to do this either. Our mothers were stuck in 
a perpetual state of girlhood. Their grandmothers as well, because like I said, this is about the slave experience was to keep the black woman in a state of girlhood because as long as she's in her girlhood state, she cannot liberate herself. She can't liberate her children. She can't liberate her men. She can't liberate herself. And because we are the cultural administrators of any society that we're in, if we cannot liberate ourselves, nobody will. So this is extremely important to grasp and to understand and to ask yourself, am I operating in my womanhood or am I operating in my girlhood? And if I am operating in my girlhood and womanhood at the same time, then how do I sever that tie with my girlhood and move on and embody what it means to be a mother, what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a sister? Because girls don't know how to be friends. Girls don't know how to real be sisters. They're still in the state where they're focused on themselves. And that's okay because they're children. But we can't, we can't translate that into womanhood because now our sisters suffer, our men suffer, our children suffer. Because girls can't raise nations. Girls can't raise daughters, sons. They can't do anything but focus on themselves. But when you're dealing with a woman, someone who is of age and at the age where she can bear children, acting as if she is a girl, that is very dangerous, extremely dangerous. Number four is girlhood is fun, self-centered, and womanhood is other-centered. Meaning the girl just wants to have fun, okay? The girl just wants to go and get mimosas with her friends and turn up. That's what the girl wants. Whereas the woman, she may do fun things at times, but that's not her life's mission. Her life's mission is to pour into others. Her life's mission is to draw people towards her who may be single women and get those women into relationships and to assist um, children in her presence and help her sister with her child if she needs it and be, uh, participate in extender motherhood, meaning I'm going to your home and helping you with your child or I'm coming to your house and helping you give birth. Like these are, aspects of being a woman where you're pouring into and you're not looking to be poured into. Does that make sense? A trait of a woman is she's always looking for something to pour into because she's operating from a space of abundance. Whereas the girl is like, where's my, what about me, my me time? Me, 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 me. Cannot raise healthy children, y'all. It's, it's not, it's not conducive, it doesn't work. That's very important to understand. The power of pouring into is something that only a woman can embody, not a girl. And lastly, number five, is girls create dysfunctional relationships. I kind of hinted at this earlier when I was talking about sisterhood. But mainly what I mean is she gets into dysfunctional relationships. She basically, she draws in the boy, not the man. She draws in the boy or she draws in the other girl who's in her girlhood still to where they're not having a real sisterhood. This is a more like girlhood type of friendship, meaning there's no substance that's coming out of their relationships. Whereas a woman, she knows how to curate her relationships to fit her values, to fit what she wants to see for herself and for her children and for her family. Girls don't have that discernment to be able to decipher who should be her friend and who should be her sister or who she should marry or who she should be intimate with. She doesn't have that discernment. She just goes wherever somebody cat calls her. She just goes to the nearest person who's hyping her, right? Because she just, she's fixated on that, that pleasure, on that praise versus the woman doesn't need you to praise her. The woman is like, whether you praise me or not, I have a mission. Whether you praise me or not, I have a family to raise and I have people to uplift with my, with my speech, with my demeanor, with my life. So I hope this helped. I hope this kind of gave you a view of what it looks like to be stuck in this state of girlhood. This is not an attack on you specifically, but this is um, important for us to have these discussions so that we can start embodying our womanhood so that we can liberate ourselves and we can operate in health and not dysfunction and not having so many black women who are single and having so many black women who are single mothers because that's not natural. Motherhood was never meant to be something that was done as an individual but when you're dealing with a girl she doesn't see the value 
she'll she'll get pregnant by a man and leave the man because she just wants the baby. That's a specific trait of being a girl. So I hope this helped. If you made it to the end of this video, Asante Sana, I hope that we can have more dialogue like these and 